Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a rusted paint peeled texture inside of Photoshop from scratch. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to start with a new document. This document is going to be 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. And we're going to go ahead and leave it at 72 resolution RGB mode and we'll click create. We'll come over to the layers panel. We're gonna unlock this layer. So because this is such a random type pattern, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and convert this into a smart object. That way, when we start applying all of our filters to it, we can come back and make adjustments if, we're, if they're needed. So now that we have this smart object, come over to the background and foreground color and just click right here to make sure that you have your default colors. You're gonna have your foreground color is gonna be black, background is white. And then we're gonna start with our filters. So we'll come up to filter, render, clouds, and then again, filter, pixelate, mesotint. The settings for the mesotint are gonna be coarse dots. So we'll go ahead and click okay for that. So when you have an image like this that's uh, very definitive black and white, it's very difficult to get that 3D look that we're going for. So we're gonna go ahead and add another layer. We're gonna go to filter, noise, and we're gonna add some noise to this. That way we're gonna get some gradation in there, like a little bit of, of uh, gray in there. Our amount for this is gonna be 50%. Our distribution is uniform and make sure to check monochromatic. We'll click OK. Okay, now we can come up to select color range. We're gonna keep our fuzziness at 30 and you can make adjustments to this as needed, but for us, we're gonna keep it at 30 and then make sure that your, your eyedropper is selected and that you check off invert right here. So you're just gonna get, so it's gonna be lighter in here and we're gonna choose this white color right here and then click OK. And that's gonna make a selection of the completely white areas of your layer. Now we're just gonna come down here, add a new layer up here with this selection. We're gonna reset this letter X to make the black the foreground. So with that selection on this new layer, we're gonna press Command on the keyboard, Command and Delete to fill that with that black color. On a PC, it will be Control and Backspace. Command and the letter D to deselect, Control and, and the letter D on a PC. And you're gonna have something that looks like this. Now again, you're getting a lot of the black and the white, so we're gonna go ahead and fix that. We need to make sure that we have that gradation in there in order to make this work. On your keyboard, you're gonna press the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and just drag down to make a duplicate layer. So you should have three layers right now. I'm gonna turn this top layer off. So this is our actual pattern layer. This layer right here is gonna help us distribute the color. This right here is gonna be our detail. So let's work on this one right now. I'm gonna right click and convert this to a smart object as well because we're gonna be adding a filter to that. And you may want to make adjustments later on. So we're gonna come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. For the Gaussian Blur, we're gonna keep a radius of five pixels and I'm gonna click OK. So we're just adding a little bit more gray in there. I'm gonna turn this detail layer back on and I'm gonna double click over here on the far right hand side to bring up our layer styles. For the layer styles, we're gonna start with this gradient and our blend mode for this is gonna be normal, opacity 50%, the style is linear, our angle is 120 degrees and we're, going to, and we're scaling this to 150%. Now we're gonna click on the actual gradient and the gradient that we're gonna be using is this one right here. This is from default gradients, it's black to white. And we'll click OK. Now we'll go ahead and check off bevel and emboss and you can see that that's already starting to add that dimension that we need. 
Okay, so our settings for the bevel and emboss are going to be inner bevel. Technique is chisel hard. Our depth is 100%. Direction is up. Our size is 5 pixels. Soften 0. For shading, our angle is 120 degrees. Uncheck global light. Altitude 70 degrees. Just a default gloss contour. The highlight mode is screen. We're using basic white. Opacity 100%, shadow mode multiply, basic black is the color there, and opacity for this is 100%. Now if you want to make adjustments to the height of the, the this paint peeling texture that we're creating, you're going to want to do that more here and here than you will here because you can bring this up to 250% and it's not going to matter, it's not going to make a big difference. You can take it to zero and it will definitely, you know, make a, a difference. Going any more than, than five is really not going to change anything. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to change the blend mode here to hard light. And I'm going to change this uh, for the gradation layer. I'm going to change that one to multiply. Okay, now we can start working on the color for this. I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and add a gradient map. Okay, let's go ahead and move that gradient to the very top. Make sure it's above all of these layers. And then we can just click on that gradient to bring up the gradient editor. Now I've already created a couple of gradients for this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description for these. I'll probably add another one just to give you some variety. Um, but you can see this style right here versus something like this. But the main idea is to show you what I did here with the gradient so that you could make your own if you wanted to. So this right here is uh, completely black and then this one is completely white. These are going to serve as our shadow and our light. Now you know that in order to make anything look realistic, you need to have that light and shadow and then everything in here is going to be the colors that we're using here. I'm going to go through those, but I wanted to show you this because you might find that this right here is going to be too light. These white areas um, that are representing where uh, this texture is raising up. So we can actually come in here and bring that color down as much as right there and you can see the difference that it makes. You can see, you can still tell that it's raised, but you're bringing that down a lot. So um, this is just gonna control your lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine right around there. And the same thing for the shadow. So just as long as you know, you have your light, your shadow, and then everything in between is gonna be the colors that you're using here. And I'm gonna show you the colors that I've used and the positions where I've set them. So everything is pretty uniform here. I've got my first one, this should actually be location 25. So I've got this first one at location 25 and then I have them in increments of 10. So 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. And this first color at location 25 is 610B0B. This one, location 35, 13C BB8. Now this is just in case you want to make them on your own rather than downloading them. So we've got this one at location 45. That's the same color that we have here. C uh, 610B0B. The next is location 55. Color here is AC3E17. I'll also have all of these settings on my website so you can check that out as well. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description for that. And location 65, this color is DE4B0C. Next one, location 75, AD7B01. And that's pretty much it for this. Now what I'm going to do is grab this top layer and um, hold the shift key and grab the bottom layer. Command and the letter E on the keyboard to merge all of those layers. Control and the letter E on a, on a PC. Once I have this layer flattened, I can come back up to Filter, Other, and Offset. 
Now this is a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel document. So we're just gonna cut that in half. So we're gonna go 500 horizontal, 500 vertical, and we're choosing wrap around for this. For some reason, I have these blank pixels in here. I'm not sure what happened there, but that's fine. We're just gonna work on creating a seamless pattern. So we're gonna come to the clone stamp tool right here. Now with the clone stamp tool, you'll need a selection. So you're just gonna grab a part of the existing pixels and then apply them to the seam area, which right here we have a very obvious seam. So I'm gonna hold the Option key, Alt key on a PC, and then just sample an area. And I'm just gonna take from each side to make sure that it stays pretty random. Let me go ahead and take care of this and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got the seams pretty much covered. Um, like I said, you know, just going back and forth, grabbing some texture and making the whole thing look as random as possible. Um, and now once I have something that I'm semi happy with, I can come back up to filter and then do that offset function again. And that's gonna give me something a little more random. You can see I have some areas right here that still need to be covered. So I'll take care of those. But basically what I've done is just made a seamless texture. So I'm gonna come up to edit and define pattern. I'm gonna call this rust. We'll click okay. If you're interested in creating other patterns and textures inside of Photoshop completely from scratch. Take a look at some of the videos in the playlist that I have linked above in the corner. And if you want more design tutorials, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.